And we are live. Good evening, Crypto Warriors, and welcome back to the Gemini Crypto episode 386. Today is Tuesday, April 23rd, and I'm King. And I'm Bitcoin Zay, and we are here to bridge the gap between cryptocurrency and the community Monday through Friday at 3-ish from at separate locations. -ish. From separate locations, that's right, but we are still coming at you live with a lot of great news stories today. First off, of course, if you've been on Twitter, you've seen that Blockchain Bandit is guessing private keys and scoring millions. Binance launches decentralized exchange ahead of schedule. Coinbase files to close its political action committee. White paper writers are earning up to $50,000. Japanese billionaire SoftBank founder lost $130 million on Bitcoin investment. 21-year-old jail for 10 years after stealing $7.5 million in crypto by hacking cell phones. And last but not least, there's a new Bitcoin sextortion scam going on, it looks like, in Kansas. But before we get to all that, uh, let's start off with this top story of the day. A blockchain bandit is guessing private keys and scoring millions. How is this possible? As Bitcoin was, uh, Zay would say, in our Lord and Savior year 2019, <laughs> how is this possible, Bitcoin Zay? Oh, yeah. Well, uh, there was an actual security group who uh, wanted to look up Ethereum and try and look at guessing the different uh, private keys to see how safe different wallets were. And along the way, they actually discovered that the same process they used to guess different private keys to uh, to help with security, somebody else named the Blockchain Bandit was already doing it. Um, and they actually found that uh, there was a single Ethereum account that siphoned off over 45,000 Ethereum worth at one point, worth more than 50 million, uh, worth about 18 million today. And they were using the same key guessing tricks that they were doing, but they went above and beyond and actually, you know, sent that Ethereum to different addresses. So they were watching new uh, transactions, sniffing out new wallets, and they wanted to make sure if people had weak private keys, um, you know, basically they, they could secure it, but somebody got there first. Wow. So literally if somebody's just out there guessing uh, keys on the blockchain and getting away with it. Oh, yeah. And spending it from other people's wallets and people would look up. Next thing you know, there was no money to be spent. So that's a that's a bad feeling whenever you have that uh, going on. So you want to make sure if you have a private key, write it down. Make sure you don't generate it on somebody else's website. Um, you know, it's, it's a lot of stuff you can do to protect it. But whoever he got, their their money is gone. Wow. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you can see, this story made wire news, people. So uh, it wasn't your normal Coin Telegraph, Coin Desk that just picked this up. I mean, I saw this on Gizmodo. You have wired here. I mean, this is going to be shared far and wide. And it's one of those things where it's unfortunate this is the one because it's uh, <laughs> a Bitcoin bad news, right? It's like crypto bad news. Well, did you guys know you get all your money at? This happens to be one of the top stories of the day. That's pretty interesting to see. Yeah, it's still not as bad as some exchanges losing, you know, 100 or so million at one time. But this is a security flaw. And, you know, it's crazy. Somebody got there while the security company was trying to solve that issue. So <laughs> uh, definitely uh, something that needs to be uh, fixed. I'm sure it will be. It's just, you know, you want to make sure your wallets are safe. Don't be, you know. Wow. And it even goes in detail here for those who are interested. You can go to this Wire article and it says combing a gazillion beaches. It's explaining how that blockchain banditry works. And it helps to understand that the odds of guessing at randomly generate Ethereum private key is one in 115. I don't know this word. Quat twer big Nick Tillian <laughs> or as a fraction one half of. 256 to the power, I guess. Wow, this is too much numbers going on. Yeah, that's how, wow. if, if you saw the comparison, they were saying it's like grabbing a grain of salt and then telling somebody to guess that same grain of salt uh, over a billion gazillion beaches. So wow. that just kind of gives you perspective on how hard it would be to do it. But they did scan over 34 billion addresses. And that's this is how, you know, I'm guessing the key guessing blockchain bandit came up with their uh, their private keys. Okay, so I was gonna say clearly it works, right? Yeah, clearly it works. Um, and right. they know what they were doing. They it was it was an automatic process. They have bots running, so you know, of course, it's not some guy in a basement tapping it, uh, you know, doing it manually. But yeah, somebody's pretty sophisticated. You don't know if it's one person or if it's a group of people, but this is a uh, this is a problem. Is this something people should be worried about? I mean, moving forward when it comes to Ethereum addresses and passwords and all that. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, for those of you who have Meta MetaMask or have My Ether Wallet, or if you have some downloaded wallet from Android or iOS, you want to make sure when you generate private keys uh, for those wallets 
that they're as safe as possible, as secure from either a trusted wallet or offline, if possible. Um, there's a lot of tutorials for that online. We actually do one ourselves, but this is a problem if you're just generating keys through uh, some random website that you haven't vetted, because uh, those keys could probably easily be stolen, and their amount of security isn't you know up to par. So definitely want to uh, protect yourself there. All right, some quick shout outs I uh, want to give. I could not figure out how to get this chat cam working or this chat box working, but we have it going. So Max X, I want to give you a shout out. What's going on? Max X is first on here. Edwin IT, Madam That's Crypto, good. Close 71, Fred Kamen, Edwin IT, uh, Donald Muhammad. This who else we have? Max X said weak a uh, random number generation. Hilarious. <laughs> uh, Close 71. Crypto Q said uh, my Ether wallet was done last year. That is true. What's going on, Malik? Mark Maxwell said, just peep Zay on Crypto Windy O's cast. Nice. The gym is always rep lovely. When you was on Crypto Window O? Uh, just a couple of hours ago. I uh, just jumped okay. on. Okay. Uh, yeah. One of those things that the last second jumped on there, talked about Bitcoin, race, a uh, bunch of different things, business, inclusion, and different conferences coming up this year. So Nice. Was she hosted you? Yep. Uh, hosted on her show. Yep. Shout out to Crypty Window. Oh, what's going on, Antonio? PFC Wells, Allison Thompson, Harold George. Hello, hello, all. Yep, yeah. All right. Uh, next story up: Binance launches decentralized uh, exchange ahead of schedule. Big news there, huh? Oh yeah, definitely. And uh, CZ's, you know, nonstop worker. And most people were anticipating this, but they were ahead of schedule, which rarely happens in the tech world. Most of the time, people are behind schedule. But uh, yeah, good to see there from them. And based on the test net I have tried over the last two months, this does look like something that'll that'll put a lot of businesses out of business if they're not up to speed. And then the move to their own Binance chain helps as well. So uh, Binance is moving right now. Right. Uh, as we discussed before in the past as well, for those who are not in the loop, Binance's much anticipated decentralized exchange has gone live ahead of its planned schedule. That's right, when backed and others are backing out, of the game binance is moving forward uh but of course this is the world's top crypto exchange as you can see here uh by adjusted volume and they announced the news today saying that uh while trading will begin at a later date users can now create wallets on the binance deck so it looks like this is a good time to go in start doing some beta uh not necessarily testing but i guess setting up the system uh to how you would like to use it once it's uh, ready to go mm -hmm. yeah and uh, uh, i'm i'm definitely one of those people that uh, are very bullish on Binance just because of the good news that they could keep putting out from a fundamental standpoint. You know, their coin is okay, but from a fundamental standpoint, they're building at a, a way faster speed than a lot of different companies. It's good to see. Well, shout out to Binance Dex, always keeping it pushing. Next up, Coinbase files to close its political action committee. That is right. When they first came up with it, we had no clue why, uh, with the exception that they were trying to help shape regulation. But it looks like major United States based crypto exchange Coinbase has filed to close its political action committee on April 3rd. According mm -hmm. to filing with the Federal Election Commission, FEC, that's right, another acronym we never knew existed. The regulatory agency in charge of enforcing election laws, Coinbase's PAC received no funds nor made any disbursements and is seeking to terminate the PAC. Uh, per FEC regulations, a PAC must file a termination report in order to cease operations once it no longer intends to make or receive contributions or expenditures. Uh, in general, I find this story interesting. I think the true reason why they're getting rid of this uh, PAC, Political Action Committee, isn't because they couldn't raise funds, but because they're trying to do IPO. And yeah. no one wants to sell a business and have the stench of any politician on them. <laughs> uh, and this is what I think having a PAC would do. It literally brings Coinbase out of just the business side of things and, and puts them in the middle of, of a larger debate. The same debate, they got Mark Zuckerberg under the hot, uh, I guess, you know, the, on, in the hot seat. Once he claimed he was going to run for president, they were like, uh, down on our watch. Well, it seems yeah. to me it's the same thing with Coinbase is, you know, I find it very hard to believe that a company can turn into a unicorn company, make billions of dollars in two or three years, four years, however long they've been out, uh, but they can't receive any funds for a PAC. I don't see that being true or possible. I don't know. Yeah. And I mean, maybe the, maybe the timing is bad because, like you said, they're trying to do an IPO. It would look kind of suspect if they raised billions of dollars for IPO and then somehow their their pack was funded at the same time. So I'm sure that was that was the thought process with their lawyers and stuff. But yeah, Coinbase it looks as though you know uh, the FEC has stepped in on this. 
And, you know, of course, we, we know that a lot of politicians will get funded through cryptocurrency uh, at some point. But, you know, right now you, you kind of want to keep it low. You don't want <laughs> like Coinbase, this pack, you kind of want to make sure it's not timing up with the IPO. So, um, yeah, we'll see if they bring it back at a later date. Right. They're like, once we sell this company off, we, that's probably what we want a regular sell. Like, you won't need a you won't need a, a pack once oh, you make oh. this money off this IPO. All right. You can do whatever you want. It's oh, called yeah. running for uh governor, all right, kid. Let's do it. Uh <laughs> going to some of these actual comments now. Some good comments are coming in. Uh Max X said, I predict not many will use the BNB decks and it encounters regulatory problems, but who knows? Crypto Q said, Does it have its own native currency? Would they be using BNB? Uh, looks like as Max X replied, they'd be using BNB. And as he also said, they build at a faster speed because they're hiding in Malta, LOL. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's good. But one thing I do want to bring up is the same guy, Max X, is saying the whole point is to uh, pump the price of BNB, which is why they're doing it. And they're requiring payment in BNB just to get listed. So, uh, so what's your thoughts on that? that? I mean, that's actually a good plan from a business perspective to say, hey, we'll do the DEX as long as you guys use our only token we've been making use. Absolutely. And I mean, like we said, CZ, they never stop working, which is the good thing about uh, Binance right now. It can be called a utility token, even though the price and value is going up. That's a product of a actual utilization of their token. If you have to pay fees, if you have to get on their chain with it. All these different ways are good ways to use it. So smart move uh, on his part, in my opinion. All right. And PFC Wells is saying, do we see the story about Coinbase acquiring an exchange? Have you seen it already? Um, did not. I saw somebody mention on Twitter. I haven't read through the story, though. We'll probably Whoa. talk about it tomorrow once it comes out all the way. All right. And then what's going on with Tessa Hall and Cool Works? PFC Wells said, I saw the post IG. We'll definitely check that out. Hmm. Um, yeah, this is pretty interesting to see. Here's a good story, folks. Research white paper writers can earn $50,000, but startups often mislead investors. Something that uh, I would, I wish I could say we all didn't know, but I know we all did know that already. <laughs> uh, but let's bring this story up here. Let's see. Boom. Um, as you can see here, it looks like white paper writers are earning up to $50,000 per job. That is right. $50,000 per job, according to a decrypt investigation published on April 22nd. Uh, but the freelancers involved have accused some startups of misleading investors. That's something we have continuously harped on. But the writers told the website as part of its two week investigation that completing a paper can take up to eight months and cost between one thousand and fifty thousand dollars. With most of the work found via platforms such as LinkedIn and Upwork. Many of those interviewed alleged they were constantly required to fabricate and exaggerate facts again. <laughs> Um, if you're doing a, a crypto project now, you're spending eight months on your white paper and spending 50K on it. This is a project I would not want to invest in. Mm, yeah, not at all. And this seems like a, uh, a writer's wet dream you to be able to just throw out stuff that sounds good. Don't really have to have a product behind it. This is what everybody likes. If you can write about an imaginary product with an imaginary use case, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's like writing fiction. So, yeah, throwing out the price that they were paying for these. Yeah, if you need that much. How much was the Bitcoin white paper, uh, King? How much did that cost? Right. The Bitcoin white paper, I believe it was complimentary to all of us folks. And not only that, it was eight pages. People, the ninth page was a list of references. It wasn't even a long list. So, again, uh, I'm not understanding how we could create the Bitcoin network, Bitcoin, in eight pages. Mm -hmm. And it takes eight months and $50,000 to create a failed project's white paper. <laughs> because <laughs> as of now, that's all we have is a lot of failed projects from what I've seen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, some of it is warranted as we move into different you know, areas of technology with STOs, with IEOs, with different types of fundraising techniques. You'll need it. But for just cryptocurrency and just a project, come on, man. We don't need 70 pages trying to describe uh, your dreams and aspirations. We need actual products. This is what got to me. This is what got the government involved. Um, this is what got the government involved. Mm -hmm. And people paying 50K for white papers, <laughs> getting out of control, and the government smelled money and said, hold on, hold on, hold on. In fact, let me stop this camera. You all you all know what I got to do. Mm -hmm. Oh, you y'all here paying 50K white paper? Yeah. It was a I lot paid. of people out here who were copy and pasting the same. The government, the government has some words we want to write down in that paper, too. It's called special, <laughs> special investigator. And we didn't see none of that money. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's the crazy thing, too, is that people didn't think this would come back on them. Uh, you know, honestly, the ICO market was such a mess. It'll be funny them unwrapping it over the next few years because it'll take some time. But yeah, it'll be some 
some white paper writers in there that'll have to follow up what they wrote in there. With something oh, better. For sure. Mm -hmm. I actually want to bring up this chat box too. All right, let me bring this up because somebody made uh I've seen some really good comments coming in. Uh PFC, uh no, excuse me, pardon me. Don Donley Gunn said, uh, LOL, love how the writers said they felt like what they were doing was unethical, but they still did it. Right. Sure. <laughs> That's the craziest thing about it. I mean, it. there's money though, you know, 50k. Yeah, whatever. It's like we sh we shouldn't do this, but ah, I got kids, I got to feed. Hey, um, if you want to make money, do it. Just don't, you know, try and go the ethical route. Like, yeah, right, right, exactly. What's going on? The new beginnings. Hello, hello. Mm -hmm. Um, this is crazy. Um, I mean, eight months, fifty k white paper. Again, people, this we were talking about the new ecosystem. If you haven't already considered going on Upwork or LinkedIn to uh do some copywriting skills for blockchain projects, it looks like we have another. A yeah. part of the ecosystem that is booming right now. This is crazy. It's madness. Yeah. All right. Uh, in other news, Wall Street Journal has reported that a Japanese billionaire SoftBank founder lost $130 million on Bitcoin investments. I know Bitcoin Day is going to point this out, but folks, just remember before we get into this story that you have technically never lost money on a Bitcoin investment if you don't sell. Mm. So right now, I'm assuming he sold $130 million worth of a loss. Yeah, instead okay. of holding like a smart billionaire would. So I don't know. Yeah, well, he already made one dumb choice by buying at the very top of the market. He read all of, I guess, the uh, euphoric tweets, all of the different you know write-ups about Bitcoin going to a million in one day because there were people that were so excited. They didn't realize that you know we were on such a steep slope. The crash was coming, and he was one of those people. He purchased a large amount of Bitcoin at the record price of around 20,000 and Ooh. he bought it in late 2017 but he sold it in early 2018 so he barely had it for a few months oh he couldn't even hold on he couldn't even hold on for a little bit uh taking 130 million dollar loss um and you know he's the second richest man in japan so as much money as he put into it he shouldn't have panicked that easily if you have you know money long term and somebody should have told him not to buy that price anyway but Next time you want to spend that much money, uh, sir, come holla at your boy. We can definitely uh, consult you better than whoever told you that. Um, right. Yeah, what a terrible, terrible time. I mean, can you remember in December? We spent half of December 2017 telling people not to buy Bitcoin because uh, it was a terrible time in the market cycle and you're buying the top. But this guy, he did it anyway. Didn't even hold. Wasn't a real believer. Sold, lost 130 million. And I guarantee you, he'll be buying back in at some point. <laughs> well, he's definitely going to buy back in. But, uh, was even more interesting about it. I want to know for one, who who sold it to him? Like, was this over the counter? Was it somebody he knew? Like, you know, when a young guy is like, "Hey, give me the money, I'll get you the crypto." Uh, regardless, of whatever it was, I want to know who sold it to him. What was the fee on it? <laughs> because whoever puts this deal together, I mean, uh, what if he lost one hundred and thirty million uh, and he bought at the top? How much money did he probably put in there? Right? Let's say, <laughs> let's say he put a couple hundred mil, two, three hundred mil in there. Yeah. What was this uh, finder's fee? That's what I'm more concerned about at this point. I'm over here pocket watching, man. Yeah, no. <laughs> well, <laughs> one of the worst parts about this, well, I won't say worst. One of the actual best parts about this is the fact that he is a good investor outside of Bitcoin. So this right. kind of shows people that these smart people that, you know, he's worth over $100 billion through his SoftBank Vision Fund. Um, it's the largest capital fund on the planet. Uh, he made early bets at Uber and WeWork. So he's good in other areas, but you keep telling people crypto is an entirely different monster. It has a totally different, uh, you know, mechanics, different ways you can invest, different risks. And for those of you who aren't skilled in it, you can be skilled in other areas because I see a lot of people in banking and traditional markets come over to crypto like, oh yeah, I know what I'm doing based on that. Not really. Uh, you can be like this guy and maybe not lose 130 million, but you know, definitely lose a good amount of money not knowing uh, how to navigate this um, this platform. So. Um, uh, Max, Max yeah. X is pretty funny. He said, "Even whales get FOMO." Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, especially when you're rich. I mean, you're either really rich or really poor, and you're like, "What else?" <laughs> Let's just take Somebody, a chance. Seb R says, "Sado as in hado or ho." <laughs> it's pretty funny. Yeah, and and Matisse says he's worth 24 billion. He, I, you're right. Right. I mean, he really is. He, he really is. He's probably just like, ah, oh, man, almost. And then, like I say, he's probably gonna buy back, and then he'll he'll make some money in the end, hopefully. As uh, Crypto Q said, his careless "quote unquote" trade is a bad look. Also, weak hands and no coiners. Look, look, even bankers get took. Exactly. 
Yeah. Um, and want to give a shout out to uh, a couple people. Oh, first Dennis Turk. Hello to you. I don't think I've seen his name for Dennis Turk said Dex looks like an IOU. It's stupid. Mm -hmm. Hey, that's right. Keep giving us feedback. People would love to hear about your thoughts. Mm -hmm. And Seb R, give a shout out to Seb R. Seb R said, where are my coders at? Who's trying to start a SAAS company as in a software as a service, if you don't know company? And he also asked, or he or she said, who is working on an open source crypto project? So if you're looking to code to start a project, looks like you need to hit up Seb R, folks. Oh, yeah. Network, network. There we go. Uh, some new news coming in. Unfortunate uh, to see a prison sentence like this, but... I guess is well deserved. We'll find out here soon. But 21 year old has been jailed for 10 years after stealing $7.5 million in crypto by hacking cell phones. Mm. That is right. Again, coin telegraph, awesome photo. This guy's like being on the back of police cars and speeding off. I even like how they get the little white lines to show that it's actually driving. I mean, oh, yeah. coin telegraph, listen, this the yeah. artist over there. It's amazing. Oh, the artist, the coin telegraph. Right. Uh, here, I'm not. Screen share. Here we go. A 21 year old man has been sentenced to 10 years in prison after becoming one of the first people in the United States to be convicted of stealing cryptocurrency by hacking into cell phones. Prosecutors in Santa Clara announced the jail sentence on April 22nd. Looks like in February, Joel Ortiz had pleaded guilty and to theft and accepted the 10 year plea deal. Uh, he stole more than $7.5 million from at least 40 victims. For one, if you know 40 people that's worth 7.5 million, son, you should have got you along. Uh, but the <laughs> press release notes that he spent, uh, he then spent $10,000 a time at Los Angeles nightclubs. I knew I saw him one night, man. This guy, this guy. Right? No. <laughs> I, I, I think his name is Bitcoin Zay. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> he hired a helicopter to fly him and his friends to a music festival. I'm assuming Coachella since he just got caught now. And he bought top end Gucci clothes and luggage. That is right. You don't know no rich till you know new rich people. Uh, and it looks like in May 2018, one crypto entrepreneur in Cupertino lost $5.2 million in a matter of minutes. Prosecutors also wrote uh and they described this one time high school valedictorian valedictorian as a mm -hmm. prolific sim swapper who targeted victims to steal cryptocurrency and to take over social media accounts with the goal of selling them for bitcoin basically folks the long short of it is here is that if you're going to steal and and uh do all this crazy stuff when it comes to online money and you're still in uh you know sims you're a high school valedictorian you gotta aim higher like mark zuckerberg and the boys all right you gotta go for big companies you can't just go for individuals right, uh, in high school you was the man homie what, what happened <laughs> i mean what's, what's going on this is a crazy story i mean clearly he swindled 40 people i'm assuming half of which he probably knew because people aren't you know 40 people aren't gonna give you 7.5 million dollars but I mean, way to be a, a a 21 year old and start spending that money here in LA. I low key, this this was an LA move for him to make too, by the way. And this spend, is been get caught out here, yeah. And for those who don't know, for Bitcoins, they really dipped to this story. This guy was spending ten thousand. If you know, they said ten thousand at a time for all these events. That's because that's an LA night right there. I mean, how far did he use to go get seven point five million? You're spending all the time in LA. They would oh. drain you that money. Oh, but yeah. you have to remember, LeBron James has a house out here, people. They're all, and he's not the wealthiest person in LA, all right? <laughs> I think he probably has more money than him. But I mean, honestly, yeah, him being in LA is, you know, a very crypto thing to do, come spend money. But one of the worst parts of this is the, the SIM swapping that he was doing with these uh, cell phone companies. The cell phone companies haven't caught up yet. So, people, you have to protect yourself. You have to make sure, um, you know, from a hardware standpoint, you're not allowing that. From uh, uh, Sprint, Verizon, all of, all of their standpoints, you have to make sure people can't port into your phones because they don't have the security ample enough to protect you right now. So you have to do it yourself. Um, and he, you know, basically once he stole this money, they've described him here. These are not Robin Hoods. These are crooks who use a computer instead of a gun. They are not just stealing some ethereal experimental currency. They are stealing college funds, home mortgages, and people's financial lives. Hmm. So this isn't play money anymore to uh, the L.A. Uh, prosecutor, Aaron West. And this is actual real funds and things that uh, people have saved up over time. So sad to see. I hate to see it. But, you know, good to see he's uh, he'll be off in prison for about 10 years. In other words, what they really meant to say was mm. uh, this kid wasn't playing ball. Mm. He didn't want to give up to us any of the money he had hidden away, which we know he had hidden away because we can't. Through these receipts, track him spending seven point five million. We only got him spending three million. We yeah. told him we want 
2.4 million in fines. He said, no, it would take the 10 years in jail. And here we are right now. All right. Like literally that's more than likely what happened, folks. And the reason why I say that is because he isn't the first nor the last person in the cryptocurrency community to swindle people out of millions. Of I mean, you have literally exchanges that have hacked or uh, exit scammed 50 plus million dollars and no one goes to jail. So this guy going to jail over $7.5 million it was literally because he wouldn't play ball. He didn't want to give up any more of that money. He was like, you know what? My lawyer told me I'll be out in four of a good time. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and keep the rest of this real quick. Yeah, because if, if that's what they found, who knows how much he actually has. So, yeah. Right. Might need chain analysis to get on this, but. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> go start talking to some people around L.A. But, yeah, I know. I want to know who he is now that he's been in L.A. See, you know, Joel Ortiz. Yeah. Go, listen, somebody go to Joel Ortiz's uh, Instagram. Like He's been in L.A. for the last year, spending $7.5 His gram got to be popping at this point. That's all I'm saying. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, the new beginner said he ordered new Sims and they sent them. <laughs> uh, and Tony also said, call your cell phone provider and add a pin to your account. Takes a couple of minutes and could protect you to piggyback on that as well. Um, also call your cell phone provider and tell them you can't make any changes unless you come into the store physically in person showing your ID. Mm -hmm. That with a pin will also uh, help out as well. Um, Antonio said these guys do their dirt and they don't stay hush hush about it. He splashed three million. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's some crazy people out there, man. They they really don't care. Yeah, and they, uh, and, oh, go ahead. they really think they're not gonna get caught, which is crazy in these day and time. I mean, people can see it from a mile away. You just pop up with three million. Come on, buddy. You know who you are. Right. Uh Edwin IT said, I don't know this time, King. He ain't willing to give up 3.5 or even five million or seven for 10 years. They ain't a smart move for such a young, for a special smart young fella. I agree with you, which is why, listen, we're talking about the valedictorian people, the school's valedictorian uh, here in California, which we know to be competitive, right? If I mean, I'm assuming he's from California, but uh, regardless of where you're at, valedictorians are a competitive thing, smart person, clearly, even smarter to swindle 7.5 million. But again, there's a piece of this story that we're not hearing. Maybe he didn't think he was going to get the full 10 or whatever, but I guarantee you, I mean, everything has to do with that money. If he yeah. came up and said, all right, all right, all right, everybody calm down. I got, five, I got 5.4 million left you all can have to spread about. Just let me be free. I mm -hmm. think he'd be free. I don't know. We'll know. We'll see. I'm sure more will come out of that story. Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll definitely monitor it from here on out. Right. Uh, and you know what? We're also going to have a, a one more bonus story at the end. But before we get to it, let's hit on this Bitcoin sextortion. Mm -hmm. uh, Bitcoin sextortion scheme, you heard it. Kansas police warn a bizarre crypto scam. What's going on here? <laughs> well, uh, if you've looked in the news lately uh, and heard us talk about anything, there are plenty of schemes going on that want to steal your crypto. One of the biggest now is that there are schemers who are called, they're doing things it's called spear phishing attacks where they target individuals. They send you an email and say, hey, we have a, a recording of you, uh, you know, watching porn or doing something uh, on a, a porn site. And they basically say, pay us $800 on crypto and we won't show the video. So uh, j just for me personally, I'm not paying anything. Uh, Hilarious. Not to, whatever video you got, you just got to take it. But for other people, this it, this does scare them because their reputation, uh, you know, it may embarrass them in their line of work, uh, you know, with people they know. But they are looking to pay that $800 or maybe even more, depending on how much uh, or how big the name is. And this is something that we try and stamp out in the crypto world. Getting extorted for crypto through things like this is bad to see, man. You hate to see it. Yeah, it's, it's definitely bad to see it. Uh, but I will say this: out of all the scams and schemes out there, uh, eight hundred dollars is not a terrible price point, uh, folks. I mean, we gotta be real. It's been getting crazy out here. Mm -hmm. uh, it kind of reminds you of that Black Mirror episode because we we've talked about this before. There's been uh, mm -hmm. this type of scam out there before, where they're trying to basically ransomware people who they caught. Uh, mm -hmm. looking at porn or whatever. And again, with the Black Mirror episode, it was a little bit more sinister than just looking at porn. But yeah. uh, this kind of has those same remnants of it where, hey, if you get caught clicking on porn links, looking at it, whatever, somebody will literally uh, just try to hold your, I guess, social integrity hostage by telling you to pay up some quick 800 bucks or they're going to release it. Is that what we're looking at here? Yeah. And, you know, yeah, that's exactly what we're looking at here. And one of the things, like I said, was uh, just don't answer it because, you know, a lot of emails are fake. Even if you do watch it or even if you don't, they usually just send it to you just because they're guessing, like, just in case. And some people are so scared, they just go along with it. Don't pay these people any mind. 
Uh, and then if you do receive it, make sure you spam it and contact your email provider so you won't get caught with this. But uh, yeah, this this is one of the uh, dirty tricks that people use to try and get your crypto. There's another way you got to protect yourself. Uh, it's pretty interesting here. Uh, again, people, I'm just saying this more as a joke, but uh, what if BitPay was behind it? They're using their email list. It's like, you know what? Y'all going to use BitPay one way or another. Yeah, you have to use it at this point. It's like encourage them. Like, why are they being so specific on the wallet? Like, could you imagine they were like, if, if this same thing said, it's encouraging people to only use Bcash and to get it from Bitcoin.com. Like, if it said something crazy like that, yeah. they're like, uh, we hired them <laughs> that you use BitPay by using this wallet. Like, they're literally giving them the exact directions. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I think I saw the email come through me at the bottom. It was like, sincerely, BitPay, president, co founder. Just kidding. <laughs> Nah, well, I mean that would be that would be pretty sinister on that part. Funny, right? Uh, but yeah, this is crazy. But uh, as this article says here, folks, don't fall for this crypto extortion scam. Mm -hmm. Again, we're about to get. I mean, the hackers is gonna get so crazy. We're gonna get a, in a time where we're gonna be having to live shameless. I mean, um, yeah, you got to stop being scared. Like I said, I, whatever, man, you just got to figure it out on me. That's right. <laughs> Uh, Antonio says, it's funny I say that because the uh, the email he received is the only one he received from his BitPay account. So, again, and that's not impossible. Uh, that's actually happened with a couple of other smaller exchanges. When they do, when the actual exchanges get hacked, those hackers are taking the email list. Those email lists are just as much as digital gold for them as it is to a government uh, acronym agency out there. Because those hackers are also saying, all right, we know these people at some point in their time have researched, bought, or signed up for a crypto service. So if we target them with this attack, the chances of them having crypto or at least being able to obtain some to send it are pretty high. So yeah. Uh, Numbers game. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, Max X, crazy man. All right. <laughs> Last but not least, we did see the top story or the new top story, which I'm sure would be tomorrow, that's starting to float around. I will pull that up. It looks like Disney could soon own Otis Bitcoin Exchange and $13 billion equity deal. Um, wow. This is pretty funny. And it's even funnier that the rundown says happy ending for Disney and crypto. Rumors of a done deal. Looks like an equity battle involving a South Korean gaming giant can end up with Walt Disney Company owning two major crypto exchanges. Uh, not just one, but two. Looks mm -hmm. like a local news outlet, Jong Ong. Ebo reported, quoted by Korea Herald on April 17th. Disney is currently one of the major bidders for a 98.6% stake in Nexon, South Korea's largest game developer and the second largest online games publisher in the world. Nexon is 47% owned by NXC, the chairman of which Jung Joo Kim is behind the share still. Uh, but it looks like that other major en entities that had taken interest in this stake include Tencent and Keiko. Because people have realized that this company that owns these exchanges is more important than the actual company itself. Uh, so everyone, I mean, this bidding battle looks like it's about to hit or it's already heated up. But now this done deal looks like Disney might be walking out uh, with Bitstamp and possibly another uh, exchange in tow. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, well, it looks like the centralized companies are trying to make it as centralized as possible. Um, this, is, <laughs> this is basically the... Uh, the strategy of every centralized company I've seen, they try and buy up all the companies they can. Um, and Bitstamp and and the uh, Corbett have been around for a while. So, you know, as far as volume goes, they do have some good volume. And if Disney buys it, I'm sure they have the money to get a great push behind it as far as marketing and uh, tools that they need. So, I mean, honestly, I'm not surprised at all. Uh, they are bidding, so we'll see if they actually get it. But if they do, it looks like Disney's doing what, uh, what corporations always do, trying to centralize it further so you can have right. Less and less uh, control. Somebody in this article says, "Side Bitstamp becomes American. Ever more reasons for peer-to-peer -peer exchanges in Dexas." Oh yeah. Uh, I Dex mean, basically, as you just said, this is. Go ahead. I say, yeah, it's Dex time. <laughs> right. Uh, they're saying it's going to be Corbett and Bitstamp if this deal goes through. Um, mm -hmm. That could be a reason why we're seeing this price pump a little bit. You see, you start hearing about Disney buying exchanges. That would definitely pump the price of Bitcoin. You can see here, yeah. we're looking at fifty-six hundred plus today. Uh, but I mean, even bigger, this is crazy. This means Disney, <laughs> whether they want to or not, clearly they want to, they're looking at uh, mm -hmm. this exchange. They want to get involved in cryptocurrency. I mean, how big would that be? 
I mean, Disney technically has already had their own crypto. It's called a Disney. It's called a, like a Mickey dollar, Mickey coin, wherever you get it. Yeah. Disney Run. But could you imagine if they changed that whole payment system to Disney Run, Disneyland, only to cryptocurrency? I mean, uh, whether it's dollars, Disney coin, Bitcoin, or whatever. Yeah, Disney dollars are already popular. Everybody knows you have to buy them when you go there. And if there was some sort of rewards attached to it, if you use it instead to make the utility better and maybe increase the value over time, yeah, imagine holding on to Disney dollars and it being worth more. Uh, later in the future, if you go, you know what I mean? Like people could actually, <laughs> that's crazy. Um, crazy to think about, but if they're buying exchanges. Yeah, this is, this is definitely bullish in my opinion. Um, right. People, people will be using these exchanges. And like I said, they have the money for the marketing to push it forward. Yeah. So huge news. It looks like this is all alleged as of now. Again, people, uh, we will find out hopefully the next couple of days, how true this story is. But if this story is true, you can't expect even further pump. I think, I mean, again, this is Disney people. It uh, doesn't get any more blue chip than this. Mm -hmm. And this is also a slap in Warren Buffet's face because, as he said, you know, you shouldn't invest in crypto. And everyone list, likes to listen to Warren Buffett. Uh, one of the only groups of people that people listen to more than Warren Buffett are things like the Disney estate. <laughs> so, uh, you know, you can talk about the, the Waltons with Walmart. You talk about Disney. These are some of those other names where they trump Warren Buffett's and JP Morgan's nonsense uh, overnight. So, it's mm -hmm. definitely going to uh, be interesting to see that. And then another thing I want to key in on is we're looking at a $13 billion equity deal for these two exchanges here. Again, Bistamp, uh, Corbett, and then whatever else the company is actually tied to. Uh, yeah. This actual assets, not just the exchanges as well. So, again, we talked about Coinbase at the beginning of the show. This is, again, another reason to give you an idea of how much Coinbase is going to be worth because Coinbase is worth more than a Bistamp and Corbett combined, probably again, some of this money is going toward some of the actual company that they bought. It doesn't have anything to do with the exchanges, but it does again give you that ballpark number. When we say anywhere from eight to twelve billion dollar Coinbase IPO, this is where we're getting these numbers from because they're buying up other exchanges that people really don't use like that uh, mm -hmm. for the same price, which is crazy. Yeah, man, this is huge news. Yeah, if they if they actually get it, huge news. Uh, <laughs> Last couple of comments. Uh, I just saw a pretty funny one. Someone says, I blame uh, PFC Wills. I blame Goldman Sachs for this. They started this. They did start it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this is this is definitely going to happen. It's going to be crazy. Oh, man. This is madness. Um, yeah. The bidding war is about to uh, crank up for real. Look, Disney Harris fights back against Disney's Bob Iger makes a thousand times average employee salary. Hilarious. Mm -hmm. All right. For the uh, free crypto coin, what are we doing today? Oh, yeah. So for the free crypto coin, uh, we discussed the Binance Dex being released earlier than we thought. Uh, actually test it out. Use it and let us know what you think. Uh, if you would use it in the future, uh, you know, if you will use it for the coins you have now, let us know what you think. Put that crypto coin address and we'll send you those free coins. And a quick announcement about crypto coin fr straight from Shannon. Um, he has the 2.2 wallet um, for you to update. Make sure when you install the re-index, I'll put all of the links and the instructions under the video once we finish today for everyone to upgrade wallets and all of the winners will be sent once he gets back from singapore still in singapore right now so all right sounds good other than that as you heard the free crypto coin question make sure after the video you put mm -hmm. that answer in the comments of your crypto coin address and as always thanks for watching make sure you smash that like share button if you haven't already subscribed mm -hmm. uh and last but not least we'll end it on this edwin it comment uh, who's laughing when he said Warren Buffett said it's rat poison. Uh, he went home and bought about $10 million in Bitcoin and Ripple the same day. Exactly. <laughs> Other than that, folks, that's our show today. Have a good one. We'll see you all tomorrow. Cheers. Cheers.